All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a- another episode of Random Fandom. I am Luke. This over here is Brad with the slight look of consternation on his face. <laughs> and uh, we're missing our uh, third person, uh, Kyle. Um, he is um, at work right now, got, got a new job, and so we're really happy for him. Um, so let's get started. Today, um, as you could probably tell from my shirt, we are going to be doing, well, not so much Brad's shirt, but <laughs> we're going to be doing uh, top 10, because there's only two of us, top 10 Disney animated movies. And I'm really excited for this one. So, um, you know how it works. We're going to give you our top 10 starting at the bottom. We're going to go all the way up to two. Then we're going to give you not one, not two, but three honorable mentions. And then we'll give you our number one picks. So, Brad, why don't you get us started, buddy? I would be happy to do that by starting off with some heresy because of where it's ranked in my top 10. My number 10 movie is Aladdin. Um, yeah, yeah, we're gonna what start out with the, the heresy, heck? my guy. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's gonna be more films that aren't in my top 10 that everyone's gonna question, but it's okay because they're my favorite movies, so it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, Aladdin, I love Aladdin. Uh, Robin Williams is excellent. Um, I love the music. Um, the second, the is it the second or third one that's the return of Jafar? That one's actually the second campy. one is Return of Jafar, which it's is campy, but I love it. Um, oh really so okay i i like all of them like i just like the characters the idea everything like that but my the number third 10, one is the uh, ki- uh king of thieves that is correct one i think is much better than return of jafar i agree um, just but, quality of film wise <laughs> yes uh so that is my number 10 go for it okay uh my number 10 um i would have to go with um the sword and the stone for number 10. I think that um, just the imagination that went into the film, having Merlin being able to turn into all those different uh, creatures is hilarious. And being able to um, show the world through a different lens to a young um, King Arthur at that point mm-hmm. is um, is a really, really good way of doing it. And the <laughs> misadventures that they have and then it, you finally come to the climax of the movie, um, and it it shows how much Arthur has grown. So I really, really liked that film. It's got a lot of sentimental value to me as well. It's one of the first Disney movies I remember watching when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. So uh, I really, really enjoyed that movie. And so um, I, yeah, so that's a number 10 for me. I, All right. I can- I can close my eyes and picture the crooked tower and the rain and the owl when all the like the rain is coming through the like. Oh, yes. And, yeah, I can picture that. Like there's so many good like parts to that movie. So, yes, agreement phase. I can absolutely. I can imagine all of the pieces of furniture just dancing yes, around the room and getting all smaller as they go into yeah, the bag. Yeah, as he packs the suitcase. Yeah. Um, agreement phase. That's <laughs> I got to give it to it. That's agreement phase. Good movie. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. I remember absolutely. that one also when I was young. Uh, number nine, did you say before I cut you off? Yes, number nine. Go for it. We're going to go completely <laughs> away from the classics and go to Meet the Robinsons. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, yeah. But see, that's not in my top five. So now you really got to understand where I'm at with my top five. Yeah, uh, Meet the Robinsons, though, is just funny. It's a clever idea. Um, and it was a really nice way to do uh, the, the progress quote from walt disney and and kind of tell you that just keep moving forward just keep doing things and like push forward so it has a good message too but um bowler hat guy uh is one of my favorite villains (laughs) ever in a disney movie uh so meet the robinsons had to be in my top 10 makes sense makes sense all right my number nine it might be some heresy to some people but it also might be a breath of fresh air to others um Mine, number nine pick, is Frozen. Um, I, <laughs> I I like this movie. This movie is fun. It's got a lot of sentimental value for me since I sang Olaf's song in undergrad at a Disney concert. 
But um, no, I, I think it's a. <laughs> okay, I've been canceled, I suppose. Go ahead. I had to. But, but but yeah, but yeah. So no, I I really enjoyed this movie. It's a fun little it's a fun little flick. Uh Olaf is probably one of my favorites purely because just just his demeanor and his way of looking at the world is kind of refreshing, but also kind of reminds me of myself in that sometimes I can be that oblivious. Um but no, I think it's a really fun movie. It, the music is fantastic, if not a little overrated. Um, but it's still very, very good music. It's definitely catchy. And no, it, I really enjoyed it. So, all right. Moving on to number eight with Brad. Here's the difference between me and him. He likes Frozen. He didn't have to work next to Frozen music for months on end at Disney World and hear it again and 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 again. So I'm sure he still likes it. I hate it with a burning passion. But I get it. When I first saw it, the first time that I saw it actually was with Carter Lloyd. Oh, yeah. Yes, he he like illegally streamed it. So we watched it together, and I liked it. I was like, oh, this is a clever concept. It's kind of cool. I like it. The music is nice. And then it just went way out of control and it just burned it forever in my memory as I hate it. Um, so anyways, eight. Um, I struggled for where to put this movie. But as soon as I say it, you're going to agree with me. And that's good. Um, Princess and the Frog has to be in your top ten. Has to be in your top ten. Did you forget about it? Probably. That's yes, okay. but I'm looking at my list and I'm going, I'm not sure it would fit in my top 10. Yes. Um, my sister uh, grew up with Princess and the Frog, loved it. Um, when they came down to Disney World, when they visited me, uh, very rare that Tiana and Naveen are both out. So she got to have pictures with both of them, which was really cool. Um, but I love it. I love the music. I love the jazz music. I love uh, Lewis. I love Ray. Uh, I love that whole movie. I love the message. Um, Plus, it's yeah. got one of the creepiest Disney villain deaths ever. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so hard for me not to put it in my top 10. I could watch that a thousand times and still be happy. So go for it. Yeah, no, um, my number eight has got a lot of sentimental value in it for me. It's funny, but also heartwarming. Um, Disney's Peter Pan. Oh. Um it was uh, one, I think, I'm trying to remember. It was one of the first Disney movies that we owned on VHS tape. Yeah, we and, had it. Um, when I was little, that movie used to scare me a little bit, especially the um, big chief Indian, just his voice and his personality and everything just kind of scared the living heck out of me for some weird reason. But um, once I got over that, I loved the movie um captain hook was a favorite character of mine because he was just the right amount of silly but also scary yeah and and um then you have um the lost boys peter pan um just being able to fly at that point it's like okay you're a kid with a knife fighting pirates who can fly how cool is that at a young age so you, you can't really get much better than that. So and then you have at the very end, you have a freaking flying pirate ship. And so it, and then as you get older, it becomes more endearing to you because um, and then because here's the thing. When you're a kid, you have the opening credit stuff and it doesn't mean really much to you. You're just waiting for the movie to start you read the credits as an older person and you learn some interesting tidbits like how J.M. Barry, who wrote the book, Peter Pan, actually donated the copyright for the book to a hospital in London for sick children. And just some of the meaning really starts to um, make sense to you as an older adult. And it, you you can appreciate it that much more. So yeah, I have to put Peter Pan solidly at um, the number eight slot for me. Sure. Yeah. That's, that's a good. <laughs> um, All right. Well, number yeah. seven, seven. Thank you. 
Um, seven usually comes before eight, dude. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> seven for me is a newer film. Well, I say newer. It's not newer now. Um, uh, Moana. Um, what can I say Moana. except you're welcome <laughs> for me putting this in my top ten. Um, it. I love Lin-Manuel Miranda. I always will. Um, mm -hmm. Really difficult for me not to like the soundtrack to this song. Um, it's It's a good... It's a good movie that deals with grief. I had to pick between two of the movies that really deal with grief. And I like them both, but I just like Moana better than Big Hero 6. Like, I, I love them both. Mm. I, do, I had to pick Moana over Big Hero 6 to go there. Um, those I could just listen to the soundtrack itself and not have to watch the movie and be happy. So, Right, right, yeah. No, that's that's a good, that's a great pick. That's a great pick. All right, number seven for me is also an oldie, but I think a goodie. Really talks about, um, really drives home the whole good versus evil thing. I think really well. Um, Sleeping Beauty. This is um, I I have to put this one on here because it is my mom's favorite by far. She loves this movie. Um, just the character of Maleficent is so charismatic, but also so terrifying as a Disney villain. I have to give them kudos. Um, you have, oh no. Yes, basically. I was born in 1930. That basically makes, <laughs> considering the movies that I would watch with my family, not only Disney movies, but other movies that we would watch, Yes, this is true. I was born in 1930. Um, so, but no. So then you have uh, just the three good fairies, how hilarious they were. And especially with the fight between pink and blue about everything. everything. Um, and then you have just the, um, the fight. And number one, well, number one, you have the music of Tchaikovsky sprinkled throughout the whole thing which is magnificent. Then you have the battle between Prince Philip and Maleficent at the very end. Uh, you have the shield of virtue, sword of truth. Um, and just some of the last lines, sword of truth, fly swift and sure, that evil die and good endure. And so you have those kinds of things. And just the good versus evil, clear, black and white. Sometimes you need that. I mean, nowadays... People like to talk about, oh, you know, there's gray area. There's, you know, things where it's not so clear. It's nuanced. Sometimes you just need a clear right versus wrong story to really get you back grounded home. And that's what that movie provides. And so I do appreciate it. I appreciate this movie for that reason. Mm -hmm. All right. Number six. Number six is also a newer film. Um, but being a very large gamer, uh, as <laughs> usual, uh, this movie really kind of hit home and I liked it. And it already got me with the video game aspect. Uh, Wreck It Ralph uh, uh -huh. yeah. sits at number six for me. Um, what a good film about uh friends from like different places and like unexpected friends and like you don't expect like chaos to bring people together <coughs> and just being who you are and being yourself and not being afraid to be yourself um those are some really good uh themes from that movie um mm -hmm. i i also enjoy uh king candy and really love the uh <laughs> have some candy um, <laughs> This is why I'm not allowed to hand out Halloween candy to children. I will terrify them and scar them for life. Uh, <laughs> but, but a lot of the stuff in that was really clever. The devil dogs, the uh, donuts being policemen. Um, I enjoyed uh, the like Halo reference game. Uh, I enjoyed Fix It Felix. Uh, <laughs> like really funny stuff and funny tropes in there. Um a side note, I have played Fix It Felix in like a stand up arcade game. Super fun. Super fun. <laughs> Difficult, but super fun. 
Uh, it, run, it reminds me of the old like Donkey Kong games for the Atari where you're like trying to go back and forth and like not get hit really? by barrels. Like it's kind of how it feels. Um, but uh, yeah, that's my six. All right. Good pick. Good pick. All right. Uh, number six for me. I have I, now, now we're getting into, I think the meat of my list. And this is where the, um, the music theater fan in me really starts to jump out. Um, I got to go with the hunchback of Notre Dame. Okay. This movie is probably one of Disney's more dark films because it deals with, you know, themes, especially with the villain that you don't normally get in kids' movies. Yeah. But they do it really well. And they do it in a way that, you know, kids can still appreciate the evil of it. But as an adult, you look at it and it's a, just a whole new level of creepy, which I do appreciate. The music is fantastic. Um, and all, again, the good versus evil, um, you know, you the theme is set out from the very beginning in the opening song. What makes a monster and what makes a man? You see, you know, it's like, oh, it's not what's on the outside it's not what someone looks like it's what's inside it's what their character that's what determines whether they are a man or a monster and we see that develop we see that theme throughout the movie we see who are monsters and who are men in this movie and so i look at that i see that combined with the music there are some numbers that are more forgettable but everything from out there by Tony J, um, and you have um, Hellfire by Count Frollo is so are such great songs and so such such memorable songs. Um, and then just also the opening song is just iconic. So I love that movie. It's really really fun. Um, also has its funny moments, which is great. So mm -hmm. no, that Hunchback is definitely a solid number six for me. Yeah, I I disagree with an <laughs> earlier term. We were not in the meat of the list, and now we are. <laughs> Ooh boy! Uh, so now we're to five. Um, it's probably one of the only classic movies besides Aladdin that breaks my list. And by classic, I mean like before the '90s revolution and renaissance. Um, number five is Robin Hood from 1973. Robin Hood and Little John walking through the forest, laughing back and forth at what the other had to say. Mommy! <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Prince John and Sir Hiss are hilarious. Uh, <laughs> yes! Little John Sir kills Hiss. me dressed up uh, as the... What, what was he dressed up as? I can't remember what his name was, but he was like a... a, a a duke or something. Uh, oh. Oh, Prince John was dressed up as something? No, not Prince John. Uh, Little John. Oh. Oh, yeah. He, no, he, yeah, he was dressed up as the Duke of something. I can't yeah. remember. But that whole movie is just goofball comedy. Um, classic story of Robin Hood. Um, but I like the direction they took with it. it. It's whimsical. It's fun. It really doesn't get any respect in like terms of like Disney's big movies of the early like like Disney franchise. I loved that movie as a kid. I so did I, and I still do. And I haven't watched it for a while. And now that I'm talking about it, I need to. Um, <laughs> but it's just so funny. Like I can't get over how funny it is and how well it's written. Um, yeah, that that put it mm -hmm. solidly at number five. And unfortunately, I have four movies that I like better than that. Yeah, yeah, no, seriously, seriously. But but being in five means that it's one of those movies that I can watch a thousand times over and 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 over again. Then I like let's establish that for everybody listening. Five and up is like maybe this much difference between them, with the exception of my number one and number two, which are like head and shoulders above everything else. That is, I I can agree with that. I can definitely agree with that. Then all right, number five for me. Yep. I'm actually, you know, the, the dude who was born in 1930 is actually going to pick a more recent movie. 
Uh, I know, I know. G grab your heart. <laughs> try to keep it in your chest. I'll Don't try. Don't die on me yet, Brad. Um, <laughs> wait until tomorrow. Yeah. Um, uh, I got to go with Tangled. Uh, I... Okay, now Brad, I don't know what Brad, yeah, agreement phase, agreement phase. I, I struggled so hard to put it in there. I love it, but but it's not it's not in my top 10, but I do love it. I love it so much more than Frozen. I love it so much more than Lily. I will say, I will say, it is, I think it is better than Frozen. I think the, some of the music, I think the music is actually better, which is incredible. I have it a dream as, as a catchy, bot. but I think it's good. Yes. Um, the um the one instrumental piece when they get into the kingdom and it's like yes. a kingdom dance that is a bop so um, i have a dream is the bop of that whole movie i i have a dream is hilarious yes. i will say that is hilarious I, I say agreement phase because i struggled so hard for where to put that in here and i was just looking at it and i was like I love it, but I'd still watch these 13 because we have honorable mentions. Chill out. Yes, I know it's 10. These 13 movies, I'd still watch over Tangled. But Tangled is in my top half of I love these movies. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And then just some of the characters in it. Um, Mandy Moore does a great job vo voicing Rapunzel mm -hmm. in this movie. Um, and then uh, Zachary Levi um, does a magnificent job voicing Flynn Rider, also known as Eugene Fitzherbert, um, which I think is a great little reveal. Um, and then also just the animals within this movie, everything from Pascal, no. little Pascal to, but my favorite by far is Maximus. Maximus is hilarious yeah. throughout the whole movie. The fact that he is fighting Flynn, who is wielding a frying pan with a sword that he is holding in his mouth, and they have a whole duel. And Flynn is like, you should know this is the weirdest thing I have ever done. <laughs> so that, that might be one of my favorite parts in the movie. But it is hilarious. I love it. Great music. Um, great message. Um, power of family. Um, so I, the importance of family and I just go, yes, I love this movie. So mm -hmm. yep, that's my number five pick. Sweet. That's a, that's a good pick. I just didn't know where to put it. Like, and, and I had other movies that I had to put in there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I agree with you. I just, I didn't have it in mind. <coughs> yeah. Um, number four, <sighs> this movie is so freaking funny, but it's also really cool at the same time. Atlantis, The Last Empire, is number four for me. Mm -hmm. The amount of times that I have sat there and said, I got your three, uh, what is it? I've got your four basic food groups, beans, bacon, whiskey, and lard. Uh, <laughs> I, I love Cookie. Cookie drives me nuts. Um, <laughs> there's just stupid stuff throughout the whole thing. Marge, I'll have to call you back. Like the, the old woman <laughs> on the head, oh, she's funny. Um, I just love that whole movie, but it's also really clever how they chose to do Atlantis, how they chose to make the story of Atlantis. Cause it's always been a myth. Uh, I liked the Leviathan being like a robot. I was like, that's cool. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, have you seen it? I think I saw it once, oh, one time again, go watch it again, go watch it again. Um, it's really funny. Uh, it, it's, it has sad moments, but it's, it, there's not really themes. It's just a cool movie. Uh, and, and I can't oh, wow. pass up a cool movie. Um, and that's why it sits at four and not any higher on here. Now, my top three are amazing, but even there's a gap between three and two and one. So I, I'll wait for that. Go ahead and give me your fourth. All right. Okay. Number four for me. Um, for now, um, I, I got to go to one of the big three for this. Um, it's got to be Lion King. Yeah. Lion King is probably one of the best. It's definitely one of the best Disney musicals ever made. It is. Um, some of the best music, definitely. I do think um, there are a couple Disney musicals that have slightly better music, but you can't get much better than, than Lion, Lion King. King. Yeah. Um, and then just some of the characters you have Simba, Mufasa, voiced by James freaking Earl Jones. 
Yeah. And I'm just like going, yes, this is what I wanted. Uh, Jeremy Irons does a fantastic job voicing Scar. Sure. Um, and his song, Be Prepared, is very creepy. And how they use like the uh, Nazi goose step in um, that movie is like incredible. And uh, this is where the live action movies that they make nowadays don't touch the originals because it's like how do you leave that song out yeah. what is wrong with you or the um, live action milan that left out mushu yeah don't don't get me started on that one do not get me started on that i hated one. it i will i will have a conniption i'm going to have a mental breakdown listen so we're planning on doing live action movies for disney too if any of those are in either of our top tens you are allowed to cancel the both of us yes yeah. yes thank you thank you mm -hmm. um so no definitely lion king uh timoon and pumba are hilarious they're one of my favorite parts um and then just also the music i can't wait to be king can you feel the love tonight um na -ta -ga -nya! <laughs> so that, just that song circle of life is great too so no it's definitely a favorite of mine mm-hmm all right, top three. Brad, get it started. This movie gets so much disrespect because this is when Disney changed their like animation style in the early 2000s. And it's based on a classic, like it's based on a classic book. It is. Um, and, and it's really great. Uh, it's Treasure Planet, man. Like I love treasure planet and if you haven't seen it i'm taking you out and doing the rest of my top 10 and you're not allowed to talk i'm kidding uh, <laughs> have, you, have you actually seen it i i'm not sure <clears throat> i think i might have but i'm not positive i don't think i have you're killing me go that's your that's your homework for the night go watch treasure planet my homework okay yeah um <clears throat> but it's and now I can't say anything because I want you to watch it. Um, but it's based on um, uh, Treasure Island. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's in space. Ooh. Ooh. Um, so we have uh, Long John Silver, obviously. Jim Hawkins. Like, it, it's all the same story that plays out. Like, it's not any different. There's some different, like, elements to it. But uh, the fact that it's in space, uh, the fact that the spaceport at the beginning is the moon, um, it's super cool. I, I love uh, the little uh, shapeshifter. Uh, <coughs> mm, I want to say it's Mort, but that's not right because now I'm thinking DreamWorks, and that threw me off. Um, but there's, <laughs> a little, there's a little pink, cute, squishy guy, and he's like the parrot for uh, Long John. And he like talks in little squeaks and stuff, and then he transform into stuff. I'm like, oh, I like him. Um, <laughs> uh, the map, the treasure map, is not a map. It is a metal orb that you have to have the password for. And when it opens, it's this whole like hologram, uh, hologram that shows you like how to get to Treasure Planet. Um, so the the parts it's about it that are cool. Right? It's in space. Um, there's a song in there that's in my Spotify playlist because it's just it's banging. Uh, if you've watched it, there's only really one song that's banging in that whole thing. Um, yes, I listen to it often without watching the movie. It's just uh, I love it. Um, dude, Treasure Planet is is it. You need to watch it so, so bad. Um, so, yeah, I'll leave that with you. That's your homework for the night. Go. OK. Watch it. OK, cool. Cool. All right. Um, I'm going to go with a more traditional pick. Again, one of the Disney big three. Um, Beauty and the Beast, man. And yeah. need I say more? Yep. Um, it is probably one of the best musicals Alan Menken wrote um, for Disney. Um, just the characters are incredible. Belle is amazing. You did not just say it's Lion so, King and you know it. It Lion King. Well, n number one, I don't think how Alan Menken did do Lion King, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
But I, I got to give Be Beauty and the Beast, I got to give it to Beauty and the Beast thus far just based on music. Because, yes, you've got some iconic things in Lion King, but Beauty and the Beast, you have um, just, you know, you have Belle, the opening number, which is great and serves a great pur purpose in building the world. You have Be Our Guest. You have um, Beauty and the Beast, the actual title song. You have Gaston. You have the Mob song, which is a bop in and of itself. So there are a ton of great songs in that movie. And the I'm not saying it's not good. I just personally would take Lion King over Beauty and the Beast. But it's like by this much. Yeah, yeah. no, And, and the same for me, only I give Beauty and the Beast just that much more. Yeah. So, um, and then that's called having differences of opinion. And that's but, what you're here but, for this show for. But at the end of it, we're both agreeing that they're the two best musicals that he's written for disney so i'll say agreement phase. um i i actually have to disagree with that we're gonna have to wait for my number one pick we're gonna have to wait for my number one pick um as but no but beauty Maybe and the beast one characters, I'm thinking of. it's all it's already been in your top 10 okay top three yeah yes got top, it got it got it top those top three. three anything outside of that is sus got it yeah you're fine but, go ahead yeah. um so i so going back Again, the characters are fantastic. Everything from Cogsworth to Lumiere to Mrs. Potts to Chip. All of those characters are iconic. And the Beast, it, they do such a great job with him. And Gaston is such a amazing villain that you can appreciate even more and more with time. So um, I, I love the movie. And it's great. And it's a solid number three for me. Nice. Okay, now we're getting into head and shoulders above everything else. Uh, <coughs> I almost am curious to see if you could guess one of my top two. Uh, uh, so you can guess two. This is hard. You know one that's in there. You predicted that before we started. But can you guess the second one? If you can't, I'm disappointed because I love that movie. Is it Hercules? He's got it. Yeah, He's baby! Got it. I love love hercules that's love saying it. this right now this is my number two as well <laughs> smart man i'll take it um yeah it, it's hilarious it's so funny and it's so it good is. for like greek myth like it's james woods as hades is just yes and it's like in Relax, interviews he says babe. he fashioned the it's character halftime <laughs> yeah no and it he Fashioned the character off of a car car salesman, a used car salesman, and I'm just like, of course, yes, I see it now. It's amazing. Yep. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> if but he finds out, if if it's good, yeah, exact. No, pain and panic are hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't even have to explain. You would have, and then the music. The music is also great. Yes. Yes, just the title uh, Zero to Hero is everything you ever want for a song from, from a movie musical. Yeah. And then you've got the hero ballad, which is great. Mm -hmm. A slept on song, um, I Won't Say I'm in Love, is very, very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you want to be a hero, kid? Well, what did you, did you? Yeah! And I love that Danny DeVito. Yes. Yes. That's just so brilliant. They said if they ever do a live action, they need to bring Danny DeVito back. Please. Yes. I will. You already didn't bring Eddie Murphy back for Mushu. I, I will riot if you don't bring Danny DeVito back to two. Oh, to do that character. What's his name? Ah. Uh, Phil Atides. Thank uh, you. First of all, no. but my brain immediately thought you don't have to put him in makeup or anything. Just put Danny DeVito out there. Just have Danny DeVito there. Yes, exactly. Just have him wear wool pants. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess we both hit our number two. We explained why. So does that mean we just moved to number one now? Uh, we have to do honorable mentions. Oh, you're right. Thank you, sir. I would have told well, you. I'll so let you do all three of your honorable mentions real quick right now. Great. This is my 11 through 13. He's already mentioned Sword in the Stone. Sword in the Stone is my 11. My 12 is Lilo and Stitch. Um, I loved that movie growing up. 
I loved the TV show. I loved the little monster that made uh, sandwiches all the time and ate them and was obsessed with sandwiches. Um, <laughs> it's a good movie. It's a good movie. Pleakley is hilarious. Um, you can't leave that out. And 13, I guarantee this is not in your top list. Oliver and Company. But I can respect it. But I can respect it. I was going to say, I wonder if he remembers this movie. He does. I do. Good. I do. Uh, good movie. I loved that movie as a kid. I watched that a lot as a kid. So that has a lot of sentimental value for me. But the one song that the poodle would sing is hilarious. Yes. The Chihuahua is my favorite. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, hey, man, you want some barbecue, man? <laughs> so funny. Uh, those are my three honorable mentions. We agreed on three because picking 10 Disney films that aren't Pixar is like trying to pick a needle out of a haystack. Yes. So we figured three would be fair. I've said my three. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. And, and it's been, and even though we're doing top 10, a lot of us haven't had the same movies. There hasn't been a lot of crossover That's on our true. list, which is incredible. Or um, even me, movies that are at the same spot. We only had that with Hercules. We've only had that with Hercules. All right. For me, uh, one of my honorable mentions has been on your list, Robin Hood. Yep. Um, that definitely made my uh, honorable mentions list for all the reasons you stated. Um, also, I have to give I have to give props to The Little Mermaid. It's the first time Alan Menken and Howard Ashman came together for a um, collaboration really was the start of the Disney renaissance uh, of the 90s. Mm -hmm. Fabulous music, everything from um, Under the Sea, Part of Your World, um, and then Poor Unfortunate Souls. Some quality, quality music there. Quality storytelling. Um, it was a shorter movie, um, and one that... Um, it was a shorter movie, so I couldn't like quite may put it on the main list. But um, that movie is also fun. And then I have to give props to The Emperor's New Groove. That movie is hilarious. And you're not going to tell me different. That movie is hysterical. Kronk makes the movie. Kronk makes the movie. And it's like just some of his lines. It's like, do you have the, do you have the poison? The poison. Oh, yeah, the poison. The poison, the poison, the poison for Cusco. The poison is specifically meant poison. to kill Cusco. Cusco. Cusco poison. <laughs> and then just iconic lines like, pull the lever, crunk. <laughs> it's just Why do we hilarious. So, yeah, so I, I have to give Emperor's New Groove just that much. I have to put them on the honorable mentions list because it is hilarious. All right. Give me your number one, man. I will. It's Emperor's New Groove, you dummy. <gasps> <laughs> yes, my <laughs> It just takes, I'm like, it's at the bottom of your honorable mentions? How dare you? My wife like and I love middle. this movie. It's more in the middle. My um, wife and I love this movie. <laughs> I'll watch it a billion times. Uh, crunk. But up, but up, but up, but up, but up. Um, let's see, uh, Cusco, um, just anything. You Cusco. ruined my groove. I'm sorry. You ruined the emperor's groove. Sorry. <laughs> my favorite. Oh, here you go. Oh, no problem. Oh, what? Um, <laughs> Kronk makes that movie though. You're absolutely correct. Uh, mm -hmm. <gasps> my spinach puffs. Uh, <laughs> we've made yes. those. They're good. They're super good. Um, Ooh, nice. Yeah, but I'll share the recipe with you. Squeaker, Actually, maybe squeaky, squeaking, squeaker, squeaking. <laughs> I will share the recipe on the page too with people. Oh, you should. Yes, I'll do that. Go watch Emperor's New Groove. Make some spinach puffs. Enjoy Crunk's idiocy. Uh, Isma's just creepy cat. Creepy uh, cat lady. Basically. Yeah, um, but the whole thing is funny. It's heartwarming. <laughs> um, it's a good like feel good movie. Um, doesn't really start out that way, but it gets there. And it's also like the first thing besides Deadpool that like breaks the fourth wall. And it's like really funny because he's just like, hey, uh, pay attention here, not there, here, not there. My movie, his movie. Got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that, uh, that's so funny. Hilarious. I love it. Um, yeah, that's the only reason why I gave you crap because I'm like, that's that's my number one. Oh wow. Which I think that's you're right. about to do to me, aren't you? 
Well, I mean, it wasn't in your honorable mentions list. It actually did make your top 10, but it was at your number 10 spot. Ladies and gentlemen, my favorite is Aladdin. I have to that this, I believe, is Alan Menken's best work for Disney. Because they're lit because literally every song is a bop. There is no song in this movie that isn't a bop. The opening song, Arabian Nights, oh, it's a bop. One jump, oh, it's a bop. Um, anything sung by the genie, oh. It's a bop. Part of your world, beautiful. So there is no song in the entire movie that doesn't hit different. Then the story is just magnificent. And it it really kind of, you know, as an American who subscribes to the idea of if you put your head down, anyone can become anything. A nobody, a street rat from nowhere becoming basically Prince of Agrabah and having, you know, a bunch of, you know, all the stuff that the genie got is just hilarious to me. And it's great. But Aladdin only got that because his dad gave him a million dollar loan. Let's remember that. <laughs> well, his, I mean, you find out in the third movie, his dad might have had a million dollars. So there you go. That's my point. <laughs> So no, it's um it's a great movie. Robin mm -hmm. Williams is amazing as the genie. Right. Um, he 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 really makes the movie, but also just kind of kind of the storytelling and Alan Menken's music. Um, I believe, um, a whole new world did win an Oscar. At least, it was at least nominated for an Oscar for best original song, I think, and it might have even won. So, but it it's all magnificent music through and through. It's a great story. I can watch it again and again and again, and I love it a ton. So that's my number one. And ladies and gentlemen, that is our list of top 10 plus three um, animated non-Pixar Disney movies. We hope you've enjoyed it. We hope that you've had as much fun as we have. Um, and so we will see you on the next iteration of random fandom. I'm Luke. This has been Brad. We'll see you guys later. Bye.